Okay, let's revisit this very interesting and unique ETF that even after this correction is still up 25, almost 26% for the year. We can see it's by iShares and it's the US Dividend and Buyback ETF. So essentially the strategy here is it's not quite a dividend ETF. We're going to talk more about that in a second, but rather it's focusing on immense value and long-term growth. Because if we come over to the blackboard here, these are the main factors that drive stock price change. And it's actually surprisingly simple. So there's dividends, there's growth in earnings, and then there's the P ratio applied to that earnings. And that's what gives you the total return of a stock. And these main factors can be split up into two different groups. The first is what companies can control internally. And the second is what companies can't control. So in terms of what companies can control, this includes their dividend policy. So using Microsoft as an example, if we come to their dividends, their dividend history, every single year on the dot, the company increases their dividend payout as their earnings increase, giving that profit back to the investor. Investor. And the second major factor is earnings growth. And of course, companies can control this. They can't change it overnight. But if they're quality and they make the proper investments, they can do this. And share buybacks is a tool companies can use to limit outstanding shares and boost EPS. Now, the remaining factor is the P ratio or the multiple applied to the company's earnings. And this is something companies cannot control. And as I'm sure you guys are aware of, right now the multiples applied to earnings are near an all-time high. And I thought this chart on the S&P 500 was super insightful of this issue. So the green bars are the dividends of the S&P 500, the bluish purple are the stock buybacks, and in this red line is the actual S&P 500 index. And it just helps to visualize the disconnect between the fundamentals and the valuation. So this ETF, ticker DIVB, is focusing on what the company can control, their dividends and their share buybacks. So now let's do some comparisons comparisons to see where this ETF stacks up against the competition. So the first one you have to do is just the market. So in comparison to the S&P 500 over the past one year, this ETF has done great. And something I do want to draw your attention to is that during the most recent pullback, the market went down roughly 10%, and this ETF only went down 5%. Now, unfortunately, we cannot zoom out over the past five years because this ETF came into existence in late 2017. Now, if we stack it up against a dividend ETF like SCHD, we still have a slight outperformance. And if we stack it up against the QQQ, it's not even close. The volatility is nowhere near as high, and the level of return is about twice that of the NASDAQ. Now, we can look at charts all day, I really like this tool because it shows you the exact overlap between two different funds. So DIVB in comparison to the overall market, it's actually pretty similar with a 61% overlap. So that tells us that DIVB has tons of high quality large cap companies within it. If we compare it versus SCHD, that dividend ETF, we can see the overlap here is only 17%. I do want to mention that DIVB is much more diversified with 322 holdings and SCHD only has 105 and half of SCHD's holdings are within DIVB. Another comparison we can do is VTV, which is a Vanguard value ETF. And here we have a 61% overlap. So pretty similar to the overall market and more overlap than with a dedicated dividend ETF. And the final comparison I want to do is VXF, which is VTI, the total market minus the S&P 500. So essentially this shows you how much small cap and mid cap is in this ETF and it's not that much. So as we saw, the price appreciation over the past one year is almost 30% which to my knowledge is one of the best on the entire market. So that's the price performance. And when it comes to the dividends, the yield here is only 2%. And if we open up the dividend history and look at this to see the growth over time, it definitely has some growth, but not a lot. So this data, as well as the overlap data we just saw, leads me to believe that this ETF sits somewhere between the S&P 500 and a dedicated dividend ETF like SCHD in terms of the holdings. Okay, and finally, let's take a look at the fact sheet of this actual investment to gather a bit more final information. So the iShares US Dividend and Buyback ETF seeks to track the investment results of an index composed of US stocks with a history of dividend payments and or share buybacks. As we saw, it was launched in 2017 and the expense ratio is kind of high at point to 5%. So why buy this ETF? So as talked about, this focuses on companies that return capital to shareholders through paying dividends and or share buybacks. And both of these methods are proven drivers of long-term stock growth. And taking a look at the top 10 holdings, we can see why there's so much overlap with the S&P 500, although there's definitely some differences. So we have Apple, Microsoft, JP Morgan Chase, Berkshire Hathaway. We even have AT&T up here, Procter & Gamble, and companies like Google and Facebook. In terms of the sector allocation, we can see that information technology is 23% of this ETF followed by financials and healthcare. So this technology here is really gonna to help to drive long-term price appreciation, especially in comparison to a dedicated dividend ETF, such as SCHD. 
And the final thing I want to check out is the actual benchmark this ETF follows, which is the Morningstar US Dividend and Buyback Index. So I found this document, which is the construction rules for this index. And let me just read the overview for you guys in this video. So in recent decades, share buybacks have emerged as a significant mechanism that corporations use to supply excess cash flow to shareholders. Buybacks now rival dividends as the primary source of payout in the US stock market. Morningstar Investment Management Research provides evidence that total payouts, dividends, plus buybacks are the key drivers of long-run stock market returns. Morningstar US Dividend and Buyback Index is designed to provide exposure to US-based companies that return capital to shareholders through either dividend payments or share buybacks. The index consists of companies providing the largest dividend and buyback programs in the market by dollar value. So that's just a bit more insight on how the actual underlying index operates. But I want you guys to leave a comment down below right now letting us know what you think of this ETF. It's definitely very impressive that there's less volatility as well as better overall price appreciation over the past year in comparison to both the S&P 500 and SCHD. But keep in mind, this is definitely not a dedicated dividend ETF with a yield of only 2% and there's a lot of overlap with just the overall S&P 500. There's no denying that its quality and the index it follows makes a lot of sense, but where exactly does it fit inside of your portfolio? That's the main question. But that's gonna be the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did and you're still watching, definitely give the video a like, subscribe, all that kind of YouTube stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one.